Hello and welcome to our webinar for the Pegasa 500 and Pegasa 500 installation. I appreciate that you take your time and watching the webinar about these two machines. If we have technical problems and you can't hear me or can see me, please write us in a chat version below or function below. If you have any, any technical uh, questions, please write us in the Q&A chat so we will answer these questions later. I'm Daniel. I'm working for HPS since over eight years now. And since three years, I'm taking care about our sales partners all around the world. Today, I want to show you the Pegasi 500 and the Pegasi 500 installation. These two machines were the first machines or the first battery machines on the stud welding market. They were completely created in HBS. And with the Pegasi 500, you can weld studs from diameter 3 to diameter 6. An M3 stud, you can weld 1,000 studs with one battery charge. For an M6 stud, you can weld 400 studs with one battery charge. When you weld the M6 studs, you can weld 20 studs per minute. So it's still quite a high quantity and yeah, 400 studs per charge. The machine works with the battery. This is at the end, but on the back side of the machine, I will show you later. So you can work with the battery or you plug it in. So for ex when you plug it in, you immediately charge the machine. So you can work and charge at the same time. The machine is very light. It's only 12 kilograms. So it's very flexible. And we see it's a complete closed housing. So we have here a protecting class IP44. So uh, no dust, no dirt, no water can go inside in the machine. Also, we have the bumpers on the right and left side. Uh, so the machine is a little bit higher than the ground. And so we have no connection directly to the ground and no water, for example, can touch it. Now I will explain you the display of the Pegasa. Now I will explain and show you the display and the functions from the Pegasa 500. On the back side, we have the power switch that we only need when we plug the machine in. If we want to work with the battery, we switch it on on the front. We see immediately that we have four buttons. One for M3, M4, M5, and M6. These are the settings for the power for each diameter. And we see we can adjust it. We got less power or more power. But these I will explain you later again. Below we see our battery, if it is full charge or is it empty, if you have to charge it again, for example. The signal of the machine is ready to weld. If we have contact to the workpiece for the trigger, so if the gun works, if we have a connection to the gun, if we get the signals from the gun, if the machine is plugged in, or if it is overheating, but I hope it never will happen. Below we see the connection on the left side for the ground cables and on the right side for the welding gun. We see that it is a little, a little bit behind the bumpers, so this should help to protect them and yeah, to give a longer life to the cables. Now I will give you a detailed explanation for the display and the settings of the four buttons. In the picture you see now, you see the, the values of each button for each diameter. The part in the middle, or the setting in the middle, is what we suggest. But of course, depending on each uh, surface, on the situation you are, um, you have to sometimes to adjust it. Go a little bit down with the power, or give a little bit more power um, to weld these stud. In general, these settings are in combined with the welding gun CO6-3. These guns have a cable length of 3 meters and all these settings are um, working together to give the perfect solution and perfect welding with the Pegasa. Now I will explain you the battery. The battery is on the back side of the Pegasa. We see here that it is locked, so if we want to pull it out, we have to unlock it and take it out. Now we can take another battery or we, um, 
or we charge this one with an external charger and after it put it in the machine. Yeah? Set it in. Push it in and we see it's locked, it's safe and we can work again. So now I will show you how to weld with the Pegasus 500. Now we want to weld with the Pegasus. Today we weld an M5 stainless steel stud. Therefore we make the settings on the machine. So we push the M5 button to have the right parameters to weld the stud. We will weld it together with the welding gun CO6-3. This gun has a cable length of 3 meters and is specially made for the Pegasus. When we take the gun we see that we can't make any adjustments at the end of the gun. So we can't make settings or adjust the spring force. We have always the same spring force and this should help to reduce errors and to help the worker. When we want to weld the M5 stud we need an M5 set and the chuck therefore. We take the stud and put it into the chuck and with the screw at the other end we can adjust it. So important is a distance of around 2 mm between the stud and the chuck. That both components are not weld together or melt together. We tighten everything up and put the chuck into the welding gun. Important is to tighten up the nut again so that it is strong but not too strong that we don't break the parts inside. When we have made this, we put the gun on the workpiece. Take care that all three legs have contact with the workpiece. And weld. Then we go straight up that we don't destroy the chuck. And the welding is done. After we weld with the Pegasus 500, I will show you now the Pegasus 500 insulation. The Pegasus insulation is quite similar to the Pegasus 500. But we see immediately the difference between both machines. For the Pegasus 500 we have the four buttons for M3, M4, M5 and M6. For the Pegasus insulation we have cup tap pins, diameter 2, cup tap pins, diameter 2.7, insulation nails diameter 2 and insulation nails diameter 3. All other settings or buttons or lights are the same like before. In the picture you see now you see the difference. We have behind each button different parameters and settings for these welding elements. Why? For example for the cup tap pins we're using another gun the CI-03. This gun has a longer cable length and therefore we have to adjust our parameters again. Now we want to weld with the Pegasus insulation. The Pegasus insulation we want to weld today two different types of welding sets. One is a cup tap pin and an insulation nail. As we can saw, as we saw before on the machine we have two different buttons for two different studs. And so now we want to weld two different applications to show you what is possible with the machine. At the beginning we want to start with a cup tap pin. This is a cup tap pin diameter 2. Therefore we're using the welding gun CI03. This gun has a longer cable length than the CO6-3 before. At the beginning or in front we see the holder with the copper plate and the solenoid behind. So this holds uh, the cup tip pin. We have the tube and on the front we have a little bit, tube is longer than the holder or the, the cup tip pin so that we don't have contact with insulation. On the back side we adjust the spring force so this is different to the gun we have shown before. When we weld we put the gun on the workpiece that we have contact and push a little bit and weld. Usually you're doing this with the insulation mat between the workpiece and the cup tap pin but now to show you how it works it's without the mat. 
Here in this application, you see how it works or how it should look like normally. In the front, we see the cup tap pins like we weld now, without the mat. And on the back, we see the cup tap pins with the insulation mat between, so how the application works normally. Now we're going to weld the second element, the insulation name, in this case diameter 2. Therefore we have to change the gun, so we, before we weld the CIO3, now we weld the CO8. So I disconnect the CIO3 and connect the new one. We make the settings on the machine, so we push the button of insulation nails diameter 2 to have the right settings and put the chuck into the gun. We tighten it up. Yeah. When we make this we take the insulation nail and put it into the gun. We make the settings like on the previous gun for the spring force, then we go down for the welding and weld. Go straight up, then we weld the insulation nail, then you can put the insulation mat on the workpiece or and fix it or hold it with a clip and the work is done. We saw before three different applications for where you can use the Pegasa. Where else we can use the Pegasa? In general, we have an, a welding range for diameter 3 to diameter 6 for steel and stainless steel and diameter 3 and 4 for aluminum. So wherever you have a CD application where you have to weld studs in this range, you can use the Pegasa 500 or Pegasa 500 insulation. The machine is very flexible and light, so you can move it around very quickly when you have different um, places where you have to work. You can use the machine. Also, it's very easy to use, so you only have to push the button on the front of the machine. You don't have to adjust anything on the gun, so it's very easy for everybody to use the machine to work with it. In general, wherever you use or where you have a CD stud welding application, you can use the machine. So here we have some samples for you. For commercial or household appliances, for example, on the right side is a coffee machine. Elevator constructions. Climate or shipbuilding, especially therefore the Pegasa 500 insulation. Medical technology, doors or windows, car industry, for example, for the grounding um, studs or for cable harness to, um, yeah, to hold them, or for housing and cabin constructions. We see that we have uh, received a few questions. Thank you, therefore, and we will answer them now. How fast will it charge a dead battery to full charge? Thank you for the first question. Um, to charge the better, a full, uh, an empty battery completely full, it needs two and a half hours. Does the external battery charger you also sell for this unit charge faster? Uh, no, it does not charge faster, uh, but you can use it. Um, yeah, for example, when you have more batteries that you can charge one separate and use it, the other one in the machine when you have to, to work. Can the unit be used when the battery is not installed? 
Uh, good question. You can use the machine also without the battery. So then you only have to plug the machine in and you can use it like every other CD stud welding machine. If I forget to switch off the unit, is the battery getting empty? Um, the battery does not go empty. When we don't use the machine for 10 minutes, uh, the machine goes into the sleeping mode. Uh, we can go out of this when we push the tr uh, trigger from the gun. When we don't use the machine for a longer time than 20 minutes, um, it switch off immediately or itself. So, um, so it protects the battery and uh, it doesn't go empty. What happens if I don't use the unit for a longer time? Uh, when we don't use the battery for a longer time, it could happen that it's, uh, the battery goes down under 11.5 volts. So therefore, we need the separate um, charger to, to charge it. Um, hi, Robert. I'm sure if you use the Pegasar, your beard will look as good as Daniel's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have another question. If the machine will be stored for a longer time, what level of charge should the battery be? Yeah, could happen that you have to, uh, that it goes empty, but you don't destroy the machine. So you have to, to charge it again, definitely. Now you have already seen that uh, we have a sales promotion for the Pegasa 500 and Pegasa 500 insulation. Um, if you don't receive it, uh, yeah, please contact us and we will send it to you again. Um, after the webinar, a pop-up uh, window will come up. Uh, yeah, and please give us some feedback information. What do you think about the webinar? Does it help you to understand the machines? Is there something you want to see next on the webinar that we can show you and we can show the machines that you want to see. Thank you that you take, uh, yeah, take your time and watch the webinar. Thanks for all your questions and have a good day. See you next time. Thank you. Bye.